hi guys welcome to this small tutorial again I received some question on how to model ductile damage in abacus and what is preferable if should we use standard or explicit so in this brief video I'm gonna touch base on these things so some questions which I got like how to simulate ductile failure of a model in abacus so I'm gonna show you that today one of the ways I will show you there are many other models available in Abacus so again you can explore further basic analogy remains the same Abacus standard simulation for ductile damage never converges people have been complaining about this in some of the messages so I gave them some tips but here I'm going to give you a couple of tips as well tips on improving convergence in simulating ductile damage again this was one question how to model ductile damage in Abacus explicit so this was another question so i'm going to show you how you can do it both in standard and explicit in a very quick tutorial and which one is better in standard or explicit and what we're going to do today is we're going to start with this problem with a hole in the center in a plane stress condition and we will try to see if we can simulate something like this as a fracture so let's jump into this quickly so this is a small video i have brought again as before and i'm going to comment make a commentary as we move on so this is what we have to construct at the end of the day this is a standard simulation you can see i'm pulling it from one direction and i'm fi I fix this thing from this direction so i have a damage model here and you can see i can simulate the damage and that's what we're gonna do today so i will start with the simple i will start with the standard one first i've created both but i will start with the standard so i have created this part with a 2d shell case as you can see here it's a planar shell and it's a shallow structure so i just draw a sketch and then i will just do it so it's a quick way i'm just showing you how, how i did it but again you might now be familiar with that if you have attended all my other other lectures and sessions this is how it is i'm going to delete it because i don't need this part in this case because i already have a part there the next important thing is how to define the material properties and again in this case i have to define the elastic properties the plastic properties and the damage properties so in the elastic properties all the properties i'm using are for steel in this case as you can see here and i'm using some arbitrary strain hardening in the plastic part for the time being for damage i have used 0.15 as a fracture strain there is no dependence on stress triaxiality or strain rate so everything is rate independent for damage evolution which is the softening part I have given a displacement there are two ways you can do it in abacus one is the displacement or using the energy energy is that area under the stress strain curve after that damage has initiated in this case i'm giving a curve which will follow this kind of slope and it will fail at, at, at this displacement times the characteristic length of the element okay i hope this makes sense so i have defined all the material properties i don't need any density because this is a standard analysis and it's a static analysis in this case for, for explicit we need density then i will create a section as i do for any other component which is a solid homogeneous section and it has a plane strain or plane stress thickness of one millimeters in this case everything is in millimeters and newton per millimeter square and kilogram per millimeter cube in this tutorial and then I assign it to this component with section one, material one, solid homogeneous. Everything is isotropic as I told you as well, because so this means the material properties are not changing if I change the orientation of the material. Now I assemble it, bring it here, and I have this thing in the assembly now. I created a static step. As you see here, just create, select this, continue. And when you continue, you will get this window here. And I'm turning it for one second while i am increments i have given a very large number of increments with time increments minimum and maximum time increments are also specified also when it uh, struggles to converge so if you see here when it, the software struggles to converge it starts to reduce the time increment so i have given a very small value to to get rid of that if there is any problem and there will be a problem because in this case your stiffness will go down as as soon as damage initiates or your stiffness can become negative in the real world so there is no interaction so i'm going to quickly show you that there is no interaction i have defined here no constraints no interaction properties are there and then i go to the loading module and now i have loading but there is no loading here i have in caster conditions on this edge and i have displacement boundary condition on this edge so you can see this is all fixed on this direction while i'm pulling in x direction at this 
which is the second order condition here and I'm applying a prescribing a three millimeter displacement with a ramp amplitude function this means the displacement will increase in linear increments from zero to one second and I will apply the same in, in explicit as well so I am really happy I am constructing my model now I will say okay I'm gonna do mashing so I use in this case edge mesh because I might need finer mesh in this area in this case I survived with the, this kind of mesh but, but again depending on the geometry and stress concentrations you might need finer mesh here in the stress concentration areas in this case I have used this element size with no bias or at all and I get this kind of nice mesh for element type I have used a plain stress standard element with linear interpolations and reduced integration again go back to my videos on that and the additional thing is I am saying element deletion to be yes because I really want to delete the elements as the damage has completely evolved so this is how it looks like another thing I forgot to mention in the step module here when I was defining the step here sorry, here so you need to go here for the field output variable and you have to also call for the status variable the status variable value can have two can have two values one or zero one means the element will be active in the simulation and if the status is set to zero then this means the element has completely vanished or deleted after damage has completely evolved so abacus will then keep track of that and it will give you in the simulation like a breakage or fracture as you see in the, in the animation i showed you at the start so this may or may not work in many cases so i normally keep it on keep it keep calling it because we use a lot of lumet user material subroutines and in that case we need to write it down so that we can remove it manually if abacus cae struggles to remove it by itself anyways getting back to where we were so we have interactions we have boundary conditions as i showed you i have shown you the mashing as well yes so now you go and do the run i think so once everything is done we go go back to the job and we will create a job and i will start a run and let's see if it works some people complain it doesn't convert so let's see if abacus is that bad just joking so i press the submit and then i will start monitoring and i will then increase the speed because i cannot keep you waiting here till the simulation is finished so i will show you how it looks like you will see as soon as it starts to diverge it will automatically reduce the time increments as you see here the time increments are decreasing and you, wherever you see this use here this means it's not converging at all so it, after every u you will see a decrease in time increment because abacus wants to convert somehow so it's trying hard but you see it's stuck here and the time increment is very small you see here and it took a long time so i just skip everything i am i made it fast forward in this case and you can see it has already crashed and after 176 seconds so what i do now the first thing you can do is what I abacus recommends is uh, is basically use unsymmetric solver rather than a default which is symmetric in many cases so the Again, in this case, it might already be unsymmetric, but I would, to be on the safe side, I will do unsymmetric one because as soon as you have failure, your, your stiffness matrix becomes, or Jacobian becomes negative, becomes unsymmetric. So this is one thing I'm going to do. And the second thing is the stabilization option. So if you go to the increment the basic part of the tab, then you see here, I have different options. At the moment, none is selected. So I will select a specify dissipated energy function and uh, if I go back slightly yeah and then I will pause so I will select a dissipated energy function and in this case I'm keeping it default so I'm not playing around too much if something goes wrong then I can come back and see what these values really mean and how much energy I can dissipate because as soon as you have structure has some kind of instability standard solver normally struggle because again it's a it's a big theory behind it need to go and look at the theory of how these algorithms really work and people talk about snap back snap through sort of behavior and how your uh, your solver really finds a solution for the next step so again this this improves in, in a way but if it doesn't then you have further options and you go come back to step and you have some other options here but that requires a very advanced knowledge where you can relax or play around with the convergence criteria as well line search algorithm is another one which you can look into if you, if you still struggle but i think in most of the cases as you will see here as well 
these two things really work on symmetric solvers and stabilization option B as a default. So still it struggles, but you see it has gone through that one, 10.107 and now it has forward. And also time increment is much better than before where it was minus 9, 10, 11, and then in minus 14 it crashed. So it keeps on going. I have increased the speed of the thing video in this case. And it finished. So let's see if we got some failure or not. So it took around five, six minutes in this case for standard. Again, I have asked for a large amount of output in this case. This means after every increment, so that might have caused this simulation to go or took that long. So you can also optimize outputs and reduce the computational time because this writing the information also takes time. So you see it worked and you have a very really nice profile. You can create some animation. And you can see how damage really progresses as the loading is increased or displacements are deformation is applied to your sample and i am happy so abacus is not that bad it can convert somehow you know for damage simulation so i hope this answers your question the next part was basically if we can do use explicit or not so the first thing you need to really think about is if how what is the total time of your simulation so if you are doing some strain rate dependent or time dependent analysis where your simulation time or experimental time was very long then explicit might not be that suitable but for this case if it's a rate independent case like in this case then i can try and see how it works so again what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the same model as abacus explicit as i'm showing you here and then i will replace my standard step with the explicit step So I will change again to go back to my model and I will see each and everything. If I need to modify anything, part remains the same. Material properties, if you remember, I told you everything remains the same, except I need to specify the density now because of the inertia terms in dynamic explicit analysis. So you can see all the parameters are exactly the same because I copied the same model. The only thing is I added the density. Yeah. Yep, so that's done. I don't need to assign everything is already assigned, so I don't need to go through that again. And then I go to step and I will just replace this step. So I press press this replace button and I will replace it with explicit here. Oh, I already had done it, so I'm not gonna show you again. But once you press continue here, then you will get this window and I'm running it for one second. And I don't need to change anything at all. I haven't changed anything in here. I just use everything as default because that's the first Thing you always do you just use the default values what abacus is recommending boundary conditions remain the same as you see here the only thing as i told you so this is in caster and i have a displacement boundary condition here the only thing that changes is in abacus standard it was ramp here but in this case as you see i have to define an amplitude and why i have to do it is because if you see here the default is instantaneous so if i leave it instantaneous this means this displacement will be applied like an impact so it will apply all of a sudden and which is not realistic so i have to define an amplitude which is very much the same as in standard ramp connect that ramp type thing so i will show you how you can do it so what you have to do you have to go to you can click on this button and you can do it directly here but you can do go to tools amplitude and you can create here as well so you see here I have defined at zero, the amplitude is zero of the displacement and at one it is one. So it's very much the same, it's a linear interpolation from zero to one of the displacement which is the RAM function in standard. Once I have defined that, the match remains the same. I just need to change the element type to explicit rather from standard. If you don't do it, Abacus will do it automatically in any case. So I have done that and then I will submit this job once i have submitted that job you can see the analysis has finished i am not going, going to go through how it ran so you can see my time increment was exponent minus 2 2.5 exponent minus 6 and this is based you know this as you know this is based on your density elastic constants and also element geometry element size and sf ratio etc so again this was not that bad and it finished without any problems you see no convergence problem in such cases because it doesn't require those Jacobians and nonlinear solvers and you see this is how it predicts so I try to run it but it's very fast I think so I will try to reduce now the 
speed of the frame rates so that you can see intermediate in this case i was only asked for 20 outputs so you will see outputs are written at every 0.05 seconds so you see this is after every 0.05 second you have seen the output so now i will what i will do i will create a view report and i will try to make a one-to-one -one comparison between standard and explicit so this is my explicit here i will bring my implicit uh, implicit or standard job which is this one and now i will try to make one to one comparison and you can see stresses and everything are very much in similar ranges but within five to five percent five to ten percent range and also the profile and stress distributions are look looking very much the same as in the reality so there are not hardly any differences so both of the simulation end up in the same case explicit didn't require any of these stabilization or other options for to converge and but it requires a very small time a small time increment so sometimes it can take very long for bigger models to simulate and you can compare it at different time increments so i'm trying to compare it at 0.1 so here i have 0.1 here i have 0.1.1046 so again you can see the distribution is very much the same and after some certain amount of time let's say at 0.3 how does the crack looks like so in this case i have a lot of output for standards so i'm just going through this step frame option rather than just clicking this button all the time so i'm trying to find 0 0.3 007 which is approximately 0 0.3 and you can see the damage profiles are very much what you see and also the distribution of stresses so in the reality i mean both converge both gave us very much the same results and we are happy for a standard you might require some tweaks now I am trying to show you what are the complete total time taken by each job. So in this case, you see it's 32 and it ended at 38. So it, around, it took around six minutes, but then the size of the job, while for explicit again, you can see it started at 17 and it finished in 20, so around 23 minutes. But we'll keep an eye on the size of the file. In this case, it's 222 megabytes, while it's 27 megabytes. So again, writing and reading the information takes a lot of time as well. So in some cases, uh, that's why standard might have been slower than explicit in this case. But again, it depends on many other aspects as well, like how fast was your processor was or how much memory you you know you had basically. Because standard is requires a lot of memory, while explicit requires is more processor intensive. So it requires higher, faster processors. And it uses processor more than standard. So there is no right or wrong. I think both are okay, but it depends on the problem what you are solving. And that basically is uh, the one which will decide what to be do. So I hope you like this tutorial and this gives you an idea, a quick idea on how to model that tile damage in Abacus and which one is better or not. Again, it, I will leave it for you guys to decide. So again, thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe this video and our channel. Bye for now.